All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, another uh, solve space tutorial. This one um, is going to be going over uh, doing drawings, 2D dimension drawings in solve space. Uh, that's a bit of a project I've been working on, um, and part of the reason I, I haven't been publishing much recently. Uh, almost a year, I think it's been. So, um, anyway, uh, let's get right to it. So, uh, I have all of these ANSI templates uh, available. I'm going to put a link in the description to where you can find them, um, even if it's something simple like putting it on the Solve Space forum. So, anyway, uh, to start a drawing you will take the template I picked a, a C size drawing but you know you can pick whatever you uh, you like and uh, the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna save as you can see I've already done this um, just to to run through it um, so we'll go ahead and replace that uh, the I, I just created a, a simple bracket that, that I'll be drawing here um, first things first on on these uh, templates. I've got the paper size, uh, grid dimensions, all of the, the different groups are, are laid out. Um, if you need to edit any of them, you can just go ahead and select that layer and go in and edit. So for this, we'll give it a title of, say, bracket or something. Um, so we'll go in. Bracket. We'll constrain that to be. Oops. Make sure you select the points. Make those horizontal, and then we will uh, just change the the uh, text here real quick. Oops. There we go. I've been using. I think it's railway thin. Yeah. That's just a nice neutral text. Anyway, um, so you go through, do all that, that looks good. Now, we can go in and import our first base view. To do that, we'll make this an assembly and you'll take your part that you've modeled and you'll open it up and you can see it is a, a full part here um, in 3D. Now, uh, there's a couple things, a couple uh, points of note. We've got to go back in and uh, make sure, we can go ahead and save that, make sure that on the part that you're working on that you want to make a drawing of, you have to show all and then save. And then we can go back into the drawing and that gives us all these points that we can grab and, and constrain with and such. So uh, the first thing I always do is select a face and a point uh, on the template. And I constrain that uh, item to that, uh, that face to that plane, I suppose. And then, um, then I orient the part the same orientation as the drawing. And that gives you two degrees of freedom. So if we go back and look, now this part can ro move in space but cannot rotate. Um, now that part is pretty small for, if, if you had like a bunch of notes or something, this would be a, probably an appropriate size. I'm not gonna put any notes in today. So uh, I'm just gonna make it like a basic dimension drawing. So what we can do is go in and change the scale and I know I happen to know that 1.5 works well and uh, we're good to go so that's our base view now we can import the part again and if we want to do a third angle projection this would be the correct face and we'll select this face and that point and hit on or O, press O. And then we will again orient and we can do this one. 
orient those to be the same. Okay, and then what I've found is, is a uh, good thing to do here is take this line and that point and make them uh, collinear or make it a line on, or a point on a line. Um, since this is a drawing, we don't really care about redundant constraints, so I always just allow those. And that now ties this projected view to your base view. Okay, now we're going to put in the top view. So we'll go ahead, open this up. Oops, didn't mean to select that. And it's going to be the same exact process here. Um, we'll go ahead change the scale to 1.5. Uh, we'll break this to 3D, constrain that, and then make these oops, the same orientation. Now we can go back to 2D, point in line. We can allow the redundant constraints. <coughs> And now, again, this view is completely constrained to this base view. And you can see the base view still drives them. So uh, the last thing we need to do is import a isometric view. So we'll open that up. And we'll leave this one small. Uh, and just to give, you know, whoever would be theoretically machining this part kind of a three-dimensional idea of what they're dealing with here. Okay, that looks good to me. And then we just need to make sure that this point here is constrained like that. Go back. Beautiful. All right. Now, it, when we want to put in all our uh, draw uh, dimensions here. We're going to create a new group, a new sketch in plane, and uh, we can just go ahead and dimension along. So, you know, we'll take this dimension. Oh, that is one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, when you first create that new sketch, you got to treat all dimensions as reference. That will keep the dimensions from showing up with ref afterward, after them. So we can give the external dimensions here. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, actually, that would not be technically a proper way to do that. Let's go to this point here. OK. Maybe give a width, and let's give the diameter of this hole here, and the diameter of this hole here, and then let's see, what else do we need? We need the distance to this hole, uh, and then the distance to this hole. See there, that's good, and then we'll go from there to there. And then if we wanted to, we could do put in this dimension and say we want to make this the reference dimension, you can just select it, click reference, and it will put the, the reference behind it. Okay. Um, what other relevant information is there? We could put this dimension in. Um, oh, the chamfer, right. So let's select here, put in the angle, 45 degree angle, and let's put this dimension in. Three quarters of an inch. All righty. And you can also do things by pressing the semicolon. You can put in notes, so 2x, 
next to that dimension there because it applies to two of them. And uh, let's see, same here. Two, whoops, two X. That looks good. And one more, two X. Oops. Sometimes the when the text um, auto scales, it kind of will get a little unpretty. So I'd have to move them around a little bit. Um, then we should put in a note uh, that this is this isometric view is for reference only. And if you guys know how to put in a two line uh, note, that would be great information if you could put that in the comments. Um, that would make putting in certain notes a little bit easier. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and uh, okay, so this is looking pretty good. We might wanna pull that dimension out and the rest of it. Okay, so we could also go in and put notes in here um, like that. So, you know, 1.0 interpret dimension, oops, dimensions per fancy y 14.5 m or whatever, you know, whatever standard you're gonna use. Or you could actually go in and go back to the, I believe it is, uh, it's not that one clearly, first layer for drawing, there we go. And we can throw in text there too, if you know, you've got a format and you want it all to look uh, well aligned and all, stuff like that. Um, change, uh, I don't know, dimensions in, which is not normally something you'd put in the notes, but that's okay. Perfect. Okay. We'll call that good. And then there you go. We can kind of get the idea there. Alrighty. So the next thing to do um, to kind of make this look like a, a real real deal drawing is you take off the um, solid bodies. Um, okay, and then we'll go ahead and save that. And now we now that we're happy with the face of our print, we can go in and go back to the part, hide all, save those, and then go back into the drawing. And the body showed back up, so we just turned those off. And uh, there we go. Make sure all the dimensions, again, look OK. Let's clean that up a little bit. Oh, I just realized I didn't put any of the dimensions to this hole, actually. But, but that's OK. Um, and then if you needed to, you could also do, you know, you can still sketch. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to, oops, I don't know what happened there. Um, you know, if you wanted to show the, the center line of, oops, let's make this vertical and that horizontal. you can make them a style. So if you go newly created style, you could select, you know, all these different line types and colors and stuff like that. And you could sketch in um, the center lines to 
to that hole, and you can actually make it align to the center line. I guess I'll show that real quick. Okay, let's see. Um, we will go back to the part, and we will turn everything on, and then go back to the drawing. So, for example, let's oops, make this a midpoint. And then we'll draw another line here, make it vertical, and then make it a midpoint. And then we can make those the same length. Okay, and then let's assign it a new style, new custom style. And again, new custom style. And there you go. And then uh, I guess while we're here, we might as well throw in the dimension here. And let's throw in the dimension here. OK. All righty. Um, now we can go in and home. Okay, so we're good to go. Uh, again, let's uh, save it. Turn that off. Uh, the, we have to go back to the model, hide all. Let's take control S on that one and then go back to the drawing. And we should be good to go. We can show, uh, let's see. We can actually go in and delete these now that we've got it all set up, as long as we don't touch those again. Okay. Alrighty, and there you go. That's pretty much the whole drawing process. You can, uh, you can then go File and Export 2D View. Oh, one other thing really quickly before we do this is uh, that under Configuration, when you're doing drawings, it's important you got to uh, make sure to change your margins around the exported geometry to zero. They default at um, 0.197. So as long as you change those all to zero, the document will actually print to the correct paper size. Um, so yeah, basically after that you file and you export a 2D view. You can see I've already done it. You save it. And then when it's exported, it will show you that uh, that is essentially a screenshot of what it's exported and you're good to go. Um, at the end of this video to include a, a screenshot of the PDF printout and uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions on this process or, or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment. I hope this is useful to everybody. Thanks for watching.